So I want to thank all of you for coming today, um, for joining the Zoom. This is, of course, the award ceremony for our winter member show. We're very grateful to everyone that entered and everyone. I think the show is a very strong show this year. Um, all the work on the walls is very beautiful. We're joined by our juror, Paul Ruther, who has been a pleasure to work with. Mr. Ruther lives, works, and exhibits in the Washington, D.C. area. He studied painting in Philadelphia at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, where he completed a four-year certificate program and an art history program at the University of Pennsylvania, where he graduated um, with a BFA and a magna cum laude. He attended graduate school in Washington, D.C. and earned an MFA. He studied with the likes of William Woodward and Frank Wright, at George Washington University. In 2014, he was a recipient of the City Arts Project Grant, District of Columbia on Arts and Humanities, also in 2014, and he also received an Artist Fellowship Grant from the same institution, the District of Columbia Commission on the Arts and Humanities. He is now a founding member of the Washington Drawing Center, which is a nonprofit group dedicated to the discipline of learning. Um, he paints outdoors regularly in the summer months, oftentimes in Italy, where he was an artist in resident at uh, Art Studio Zinstrel in Assisi, Italy in 2012. And again, he was painting in Italy at the Civita Castellana in 2014. Traditionally, his painting style relies upon direct observation and natural perception in search of chance moments of compressed visual splendor. Currently, Mr. Ruther enjoys uh, to teach drawing, painting, and technical art history in the Washington area at Montgomery College in Rockville, Maryland, and at the Corcoran School of Arts and Design, Washington, uh, George Washington University in Washington, DC. He was the juror for this show as previously mentioned, so I'm going to pass it over to him if you would like to say some words about the exhibition as a whole and his experiences. Thank you, Amani, for that uh, kind introduction. I find these kinds of uh, uh, juring, juring uh, uh, jobs to be the most difficult thing to do. It's ab the, absolutely the most difficult thing to you know, take a look at a, a, a wide range of work and try to assess it because it's so difficult to know uh, the context of it, the background of the artist. And so it, it there's so many ways that you can uh, you know, misgauge the, the quality of the work. So th that's the first thing I would have to say. And I, I suspect that probably most jurors would, would you know, sort of talk about that right from the beginning. So, you know, having said that, uh, you know, you might look at uh, a couple hundred works of art and then, you, you know, you simply go through what you see and, you know, among other things, try to think about the organization that you're juring for. So I, I think about that. Uh, I think about the, the breadth of the show. So um, I look at different media. And there was a lot of good range of media in, in this particular show, including things like digital art, photography, uh, assemblage, uh, collage, uh, of course, painting and drawing, mostly painting, three-dimensional work of many different types. So all, all that was kind of... Uh, uh, good to see. And that's kind of where I went with my uh, selections for the, the prizes and the honorable mentions. And I have to say that I do I do tend to uh, side with painting and drawing because it's sort of an area of my knowledge that I have uh, more, uh, you know, experience with and expertise with. But the thing that does kind of hold up is th this idea of working from direct observation and response, which I think is incredibly valuable because I think it's something that is no longer uh, stressed as it once was. I still value skill in, in uh, executing works of art. So I think skill is something that's really important. That's a debatable issue these days in the contemporary uh, world, believe it or not. Ideas and maybe, uh, you know, uh, social issues might have become more important than the actual skill involved in, in making a work of art. So these are things that are uh, changing, but I, I was very happy to see in this particular collection of work, quite a bit of uh, work that looked like it was done from life. I, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure about all of them, but um, 
for example, uh, a self-portrait with Poncho by uh, Georgie Anaki. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. A lot of work went into that painting. Perhaps it was from uh, a photograph. Maybe that's okay. It doesn't appear to be wholly dependent upon the photographic um, uh, uh, world, which is something that I also see as a teacher quite a bit. I liked collective gardening, uh, uh, pretty ambitious painting with a number of figures. I thought it, it's a very difficult thing to actually uh, manage uh, figure groups and work. Not sure how that was assembled. Perhaps that was from a bunch of photographs that were put together. I hope that's kind of what it was and it wasn't just a group photo that was copied. I suspect it wasn't. It looks to me like it was a, there was an effort to make some sort of creative arrangement of the figures with many different poses. I, that appeals to me. I think it's a difficult thing to manage. I think it was done really well in that painting. There's a painting called Corn and Soybeans, which is an oil painting. It looked like something I would paint. So naturally, of course, I want to make sure that that person uh, got a little bit of notice. I like the color in that. I thought the, the color effect was, that, was really excellent. I personally, my own work sort of bridges uh, the abstract and representational world. I find that interesting, although that's probably old hat nowadays and perhaps cliche ridden, but I still think it's valuable. And a lot of the artists that I really uh, like the most are always straddling that world between the abstract and the, uh, the, the real, so to speak. Uh, let me go to one last thing here. That uh, painting called uh, Plain Air at Bain Bainbridge Park uh, which is, looks to me, it's mixed media, could be collage elements, a lot of abstract stuff. I love that painting and I love the color in it, um, which is unusual colors, yellows, browns, grays, neutrals, things like that. But I like this painting because it's actually uh, because of the color in, in large part because of the unusual colors. And again, that's an easy painting to point out uh, that has both abstract and, and representational um, uh, uh, objects in it. So I have to say with photography, I'm a little bit weak. Um, I saw some excellent photographs. I, I, I'm not sure uh, sometimes how to evaluate photographs. Uh, I take a lot of photographs, but my I use them for drawing and painting. So I'm looking for something usually very different than probably a photographer would look at. Um, I, I, I think that's really all I can say at this time. If, uh, if you'd like to uh, carry on, Amani, I think that might be a good way to end it. Let's start off with um, Mr. Will Scott is here, and he's going to present the, um, the Friends of the Arts Award, talk about what that is, what went into that decision, and then Mr. Ruther, you'll have the floor. Well, thank you, Amani, for uh, introducing me. And uh, as a board member, it's my privilege to announce a new award that uh, we are going to have for each member show called the Friends of the Arts Award. Uh, Friends of the Arts was a local organization that supported uh, the MFA and other organizations, and they disbanded uh, recently and left a sizable uh, gift to the MFA to be used for the purpose of an award to a member uh, in the uh, member shows. And it's uh, my honor to present the first of those to uh, Marissa Canino. I selected this and it was quite a difficult uh, choice because I only could make one selection. Uh, but I think one of the things that makes a work of art meaningful uh, and worthy of acknowledgement to me as an artist uh, and as an art historian, is if it engages the viewer and allows the viewer to question anything or many things uh, all at once. And as I kept looking and coming back to uh, Ms. Canino's piece, I noticed, first of all, that there are little bits of type print, uh, little bits of paper with words and and uh, not quite enough for me to even read a whole sentence, but just enough to make me read a word or two and then wonder why the choice of that little bit of text was included 
and where it was placed. I also noticed uh, a small photograph of a young girl uh, that I think even on the screen as I'm looking at it now, I'm having difficulty locating. And my point is, is that of course, this appears to be an adult woman uh, in a collage type portrait. And why is that little girl uh, in a photograph, it looks like, uh, snipped out of a photograph, present in this image? Is it this woman as a child? Is this a portrait? And finally, I would mention that you can only see what looks like one bright white disc, but there are a number of reflective discs. I'm not sure if they are small glass mirrors or shiny bits of metal, but when you look at the piece in the gallery, you see reflections of the space around you. Every portrait is a reflection to some degree, not just of the subject, I believe, but of the artist that created the portrait. So is this a suggestion that we need to spend some time reflecting on this image and reflecting on our response to it? And finally, uh, Mr. Reuther uh, emphasized the value of technique and uh, the artist's uh, craft in his decision-making process. I might not emphasize that to the same degree in my own selective process, but in this case, that did influence me in a very positive way. Uh, this is a multi-layered uh, uh, composition of different bits of fabric and other materials, uh, some of which I just mentioned. So in some respects to me, this is a, a, a masterpiece, checks off a lot of the boxes almost all of the boxes that I look for in granting an award. So uh, congratulations to Ms. Canino, and I, I am looking forward to seeing more of her work in future exhibitions. I won't take up too much time, but oh my goodness, I am so honored by this award, but also the, um, the reflection on the piece that you shared it has left me um, a little bit speechless. This is one of the favorite pieces I've done in a very, very long time. I am um, most often an acrylic painter, but I've included uh, mixed media elements um, here and there. And this is the first time that I really leaned into it and just brought all the media in that I had been playing with in, in dribs and drabs. It was such a gratifying process and let me do a lot more than I could typically do in a painted portrait. And um, I love hearing how the little bits that I left exposed um, struck a chord with you. Some of them were in my intended ways and some of them were not, which is which is also a really beautiful thing. Um, but thank you so much. I'm really, really um, um, so happy to have been selected for this. Well, you're more than welcome and I'll be visiting your website uh, as soon as I can. Well, thank you, Will, for the... Very insightful as always comments on the piece. Thank you, Ms. Canino for being here in your response. Uh, so if Laura will forward to the next slide, we can get into the Juris Choice Awards and well, honorable mentions first and hear some words from Mr. Reuther um, about the pieces. Yeah, this is the one I, I mentioned a little bit earlier. So a um, lot of, lot of um, really uh, unexpected things in this work strange uh, objects that probably represent real things, but uh, manage to um, transform into shapes that, you know, um, hold up as autonomous things, as kind of formal art things. So I, I kind of like that. It almost reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, some of those works in the early 20th century, maybe by someone like Paul Clay, someone like that, but uh, with a really rich uh, sensitivity about the overall uh, uh, look of the the, the picture. It's a, it appears to be a landscape, a, you know, a, a plain air at Bainbridge Park. I would love to know if, in fact, this was actually a plain air piece, meaning the artist would have set up their their uh, uh, easel and gone outside and used all these materials on site outdoors 
uh, pretty hard thing to do. It's hard enough to go out there and do a, a pencil sketch, never mind work with uh, mixed media. So uh, if that is the case, that's, that's, that makes it even a stronger work for me. Yeah, hello, I'm uh, Kathy Gibson. And, and thank you so very much for recognizing my piece. And yes, indeed, I was outside. Uh, I set up an old uh, card table with all my pieces. It was papers and photographs and cold wax, oil, and a, a very limited uh, color palette. But I was there for four days, same spot. And uh, I loved it. So I think I'm gonna continue this kind of, you know, Pete, you know, this kind of work going down this avenue. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm responding to that. I think it, it shows up there that that kind of, uh, you know, staying with the subject and staying with the, the this picture for four days, I think uh, holds up on this. Uh, so uh, kudos for that. This is uh, Patrick Claggett's Nancy's Cherry Tree. Uh, oil and cold wax. I, I was really uh, quite... Uh, interested in the wide range of media in this show. I, uh, so I don't know if it's just this particular group, but it's kind of nice to see that because one way that you can sort of do traditional things in new ways is with unexpected media. Cold wax is not something that uh, a lot of painters use. Maybe they experiment with it. I have, but this reminds me of something like a cross between a, a Courbet painting of all things and maybe uh, a Nobby painting, like someone like uh, Vuillard or, or uh, possibly Bonard, something like that. So I kind of like that, not, not straight impressionist painting, which is sort of the, 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 the place that most contemporary landscape artists, you know, sort of derives many of their, their ideas from, but a little bit more symbolic. I just the strength of the uh, the image itself is really quite powerful. It's really fun to look at. There's complicated uh, paint application, very good color, but in a, a really simple subject. Goes to show you that you know simple subjects can wind up being really powerful uh, works of art. I don't know where we are on this with Sandy Cohen, uh, Lisa, really really handsome. Uh, Pastel, an excellent uh, drawing, uh, portrait. Pastel is a really notoriously difficult media. It's kind of, for me as a drawing instructor, I hesitate to use color for uh, my students very much because it's hard enough to manage uh, draftsmanship, you know, the te technical issues with drawing, especially with, you know, um, the figure. It's a it, it's a, a really uh, beautiful little uh, portrait. So very happy to see that. Shall I weigh in? This is Sandy. This was done from life and it was done. I'll put in a pitch for the co-op studios that are such a fabulous resource in this town. We have two figure uh, studios and one portrait studio and uh, the opportunity to try to work from life. Um, is just uh, great and a very different experience from working from a from a two dimensional uh, image that's already eliminated so much information. So, um, yeah, this this was uh, Lise Bruno, an actress and uh, a director in the Washington area, and a lovely model. I manage the portrait studio and uh, there's no need to manage a model like Lee. She just comes in and she uh, is worth working on. So thank you very much. Um, I'm very pleased and uh, honored that you honor her. Thank you. Um, and this painting, uh, corn and soybeans, um, you know, I think I was saying a little earlier about the, the color scheme, pretty simple, pretty simple. It looks like probably I'm going to guess a Maryland uh, site kind of looks like Montgomery County, even possibly maybe uh, I don't know Annapolis area so well, so maybe over there. Yeah, I just I, I like the the in this case the the, the spontaneity of the brushwork uh, works for me quite beautiful beautifully. It's not over rendered. It's quite open, um, and I like the drawing in it. You know, uh, one of my instructors would would one at one time or another say that painting is uh, drawing with a brush 
and drawing a painting with a brush is is one of the great skills to try to develop if you want to be a paint a representational painter and i see that a lot here there's really good drawing it's very spontaneous it's very gestural but really excellent drawing and for example the foreground uh plants the dark um i don't know what those are you know sort of like uh weeds of some sort on the left but they work really beautifully so um beautiful work this is ann reed um thank you so much um for the recognition it, this was painted plein air um but i imagine that that vincent van gogh and richard Diebenhorn were also painting with me so i had sort of an abstract and a realist um sort of um and i was trying to trying to bridge the gap between the two and it's actually in it's from a farm in frederick county maryland it's so funny, Anne, because uh, I lived in Frederick for a number of years, and for about maybe three or four, I was out painting in that area regularly. So it, it looks very much like the kind of uh, landscapes I was looking at. And so that that kind of is no surprise that I would notice that we may have some uh, common interests there. <laughs> I am looking at a painting now, Golden Fall Marshes. This This appeals to me just in part because it's another simple rather simple subject but for me kind of a, a, a type of subject that I would I would be interested in I spent um, a summer maybe a month out of a summer 15 years ago in Finland of all places and I went way up north uh, above the Arctic Circle had an artist residency up there and this is the kind of scene that was mostly available as a subject matter, in some ways not very much, but big sky and maybe a big plane. Uh, what can you make of it? I think this is another pretty successful painting. These these subjects lend themselves to um, abstraction a little bit also. You can think about a lot of the Dutch artists in the 17th century, also no mountains, Maybe not even a lot of trees. It looked a lot of lot of sky in there, but uh, amazing paintings. I think a pretty good effect of the uh, the sense of a very large uh, dominating sky and a sort of a broad uh, field there. And I like the color palette also in this one. So very simple, not a wide range of color, but uh, plenty there. Good paint handling as well. Thank you very much. I'm Nancy Fine. Thank you. It's um. It's this gas that comes in off the swamps that's always hard to capture. And you think about it a lot. And it's and it like as the higher it goes, it dissipates so quickly. So what I do is that I took a lot of um uh color choices for me, you know, for this. And the background, so if these gases are changing then the sky is changing because it's dissipating in the back. But anyway, thank you very much for the support. Yeah, that makes it even more interesting to me that those maybe are not just, you know, typical sky effects, but something coming emanating from the land, which is kind of interesting to me. So yeah. uh, we're looking at uh, collective gardening. And I, I mentioned that a little bit. I, I, uh, dealing with figures is really difficult. Uh, and there's so many ways that a, a figure painting can, uh, or a painting, with figures can go wrong this feels pretty appropriate and pretty successful for uh, the subject matter which is you know there's not it's gardening which is a curious thing it's not i i can't say that i can think of too many paintings where this is the subject of a work of art so um uh, i kind of like that taking on a, a subject which could very easily not draw one's attention to it but uh, I think it works pretty well. I kind of I, I was also very interested in the the way the the uh, the flowers and the plants and the the garden plots work in this as well. It almost kind of reminded me of an early Miro painting, with pretty famous painting called the I think called the farmhouse, something like that. A little abstract again, just kind of banding and and multiple registers of uh, garden plots. But it allows the artist to um, really get a lot of color in there. Uh, and if you think about that, in addition to the color of the figures, different clothing they're wearing, I think all of that works really well, too. And it's a pretty unified, harmonious whole. They all work together quite well. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say about this successful painting. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm Kathy Kang. And... Um... 
I feel I'm a little bit different in terms of how I approach my paintings. I consider myself more of a, a narrative painter. And um, most of my paintings have to do with, uh, I think originate from the fact that I'm, a, I'm an immigrant, a minority and a woman. And so a lot of my paintings have to do with identity, um, alienation, belonging, and this one started out as a wanting to capture community, the, the idea of community and exploring the idea of community. And, um, you know, community can be shared interests, which is what this is. It doesn't have to be familiar buildings or, you know, familiar places, but a sense of belonging to uh, with others. And that's what I wanted to um, capture in this painting. The way I did it was similar, is similar to what you said. I did use pho photographic references and I did use, and the, but a lot of imagination too, believe it or not. I, I'm a gardener. So, so a lot of the floral images, I just know what they look like. So that's, that's what happened. Yeah, I think that all works. And I think that comes through and uh, in, in both instances, this idea of community, the, the, the painting holds together quite well so it's a community i'm sorry to be i don't mean to be so simplistic but it's a community of these formal elements of the painting that work really well and harmoniously so and then i like that i like that a lot of the the uh flowers and the plants are things that you know that, that and it feels like that it feels like you have really good experience with with you know understanding of these things Again, it enhances my knowledge of what's going on here. I, I, it, it helps me think that, yeah, that's there's things in here I know that are really good, and I'm wondering what's going on behind this, and I'm get, getting a little more information, and it's even better now. So congratulations. Right. Thank you. A couple of years ago during the, uh, the whole shutdown with COVID, I think I might have juried a show here, and I, I may have selected a, a piece by this artist back then also i can't remember not entirely sure but I, I i i just like this type of work because of you know th this is a type of I, I i think i've always had an interest in assemblage uh although i don't do it myself but i i have an admiration for works of art that take found objects and are able to assemble them in a way that uh is you know, uh, imaginative, skillful, you know, well conceived. And I feel like that's going on uh, in this work. And I, I, I like the subject matter as well. It just, I, it feels very much something that is kind of uh, evocative of the innocence of childhood, which uh, um, is something that's always worth a second look in my view. So uh, a really wonderful piece uh, in this case. Congratulations on this one. This is Linda. I'm pleasantly surprised, especially hearing uh, your expertise in drawing and painting. Being a former teacher, I love plein air painting and taught painting, but I must say the first time I made an assemblage, I got hooked and I never went back. This is my ser from my series about my relationship with time. Um, being a woman of a certain age, I find I'm uh, looking back and forward uh, and um, enjoy, as it says, I'm reminding myself and I'm reminding the viewers to enjoy the passing of time. We only go around once. <laughs> so thank you very much. Okay, this is very different, a uh, very different kind of work. I, I have a uh, predilection for uh, things that tend to be uh, on the geometric side in terms of form. And so I'm drawn to the geometry uh, such as this, these, these big, bold, um, simple uh, shapes and forms. And I, I, I just can't help being uh, impressed by, you know, the, the workmanship that I believe uh, has gone into this work and also uh, the, the the result that the form in result I think is really quite successful. I, just the um, 
I, I look at this now and I, I like the different materials, which are the different uh, colors. It says it's an interactive kinetic piece. I would love to see what that is. I hope to get out there and take a look at it. I don't know what mild steel is. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, but it looks like to me that there, you know, there, there might be some pretty serious uh, join joinery work and getting metal to work together, but uh, a, an ambitious work and something uh, really uh, that takes up the space beautifully and holds its own uh, pretty strong work. Hi, this is Gil Yugansky. This is my piece. Um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm I'm a metallurgical engineer, and my expertise though was in corrosion of metals. Uh, and for the last forty or more years, I've been traveling with my wife around the world and the country, and visiting uh, museums and galleries. She's a graphic. She was a graphic designer and the project manager for many projects. And now she's she uh, devoted herself to painting uh, in the last 20 years or so. And so I got exposed to a lot of things. When I started doing a metal sculpture, I decided that's where I wanted to go is just um, stick with um, geometric shapes. And uh, there's an almost an infinite number of things you can do with them. And I'm really drawn to um reflections a lot of my pe earlier pieces before this were all polished steel or polished stainless steel and i'm drawn to um pieces that uh someone's likely to say they def it defies physics or how did he, did he do that you know and this is one of those kind of things where it's this this uh hollow cube and sitting in the middle and just two corners are attached to the uh, above and below. And I, I really like that kind of thing. And so I, I've done many pieces that do a similar thing uh, and gradually went from solid um, geometric shapes that would have all sides filled into eliminating some of the sides of the geometric shape and seeing what I get from that. And this particular shape came from um, a friend uh, who lives up the street, uh, the son of close friends of ours, and he's in an art, uh, some kind of art class in, in high school. And he came over one day to help me make pieces of maquettes out of foam cord. And one of the pieces that um, he, he, instead of my pieces were always, uh, if a side was missing, it was two sides, two opposite sides of a cube or something like that. He said, why don't you try something like this? And he did this shape that was three sides and of a cube and, and could be, and it's very strong actually. And so I dedicated this to him by naming it after Tommy. The exploration of solid geometry is what I um, decided to call all of the pieces just about because that's what I'm doing. And this is number 60. Uh, thank you very much for the for the George Choice Award. I really appreciate it. And that's it. Any questions, uh, I'd answer. Thank you. Um, this is the uh, the self-portrait with the poncho. Yeah, I, I, a very sophisticated uh, work of art and um, really well-conceived. Um, I kind of, I probably, uh, maybe just a straight portrait probably would still get a little bit of notice from me, but I kind of really appreciated the, uh, the the dress in this and the the hat, and it seems to be a, a portrait that you know suggests the interest of the sitter beyond just simply uh, um, you know a straight portrait. So I kind of like that a little unexpected. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Perhaps there's some interest in um south america or indigenous peoples or something like that or, or maybe even something more uh, complicated than that that i'm not aware of but there's a lot going on in this it is a portrait well done uh in addition to that there's considerable effort in the uh, rendering of the uh, uh the textile materials here so uh, i kind of liked all of that and i'm always one to uh, uh, acknowledge um, 
the skill of, of, of a, a decent portraiture. So um, well done on this one. Well, thank you for the recognition. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about this piece. Uh, it was done like from life for the face, but I used like photographic reference for the uh, poncho because primarily because it was like a summertime and sitting in a poncho for a couple of days was not really like a feasible option. <laughs> and the topic came um, after going on a trip to Ecuador and the, uh, and the Galapagos and we went to the Cotopaxi uh, volcano and uh, um, they're like selling ponchos over there at the top of the volcano. So I picked this particular one because it had, I mean, like uh, very interesting motifs that kind of like bring the cyclical uh, cyclical reference of art. I mean, like some of the motifs that you can see in that poncho can be seen in some of the modern art pieces of Paul Klee or Miro or even Basquiat. Uh, in a sense of the geometrical shapes that are being carried uh, forward from the Inca civilization until like the present day's uh, modern art. So that's that's what struck me at the time to like pick that particular dress. And I thought like, I mean, like doing a self-portrait with the art reference kind of like ties together the, the cyclical reference of art and uh, how like certain motifs and themes that are being passed over through generations. I think that's wonderful. I, I'm glad you put the hat on too, because I think that helps a little bit too. It just it's there's something about the combination. It 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 it, it seems to be something about you know uh, South America, maybe American West, even a little bit. Kind of looks like a cowboy hat. Kind of an interesting uh, combination. So good. Thank you. Right. So uh, this is uh, Liverpool afternoon. Well, uh, th this gets back to what I was saying about my limited knowledge about photography. I use ph photographs mostly to to, uh, to help as sort of a study for my own paintings. And so I naturally sort of gravitate towards what might be described as sort of a painterly type of a photograph, which this kind of suggests to me. Uh, uh, the theme today seems to be geometric forms. I respond to that. This kind of grid, grid uh, like like form appeals to me a little bit also for its abstraction. I like the color in it quite a bit. Um, I kind of like the looks like a combination of something that might be an older building in front of a newer building, which is all of this is kind of hard to pick out, but I kind of like that that uh, contrast as well. So uh, and some you know surprising features like that big diagonal dark area on the lower left hand corner is kind of a little bit startling so you know are we looking at this from a bridge something like that is a reflection in another window i don't know all intriguing though visually exciting and uh, dynamic well thank you so much for including this piece in the jurors choice category i'm i'm uh, really humbled considering the the wide number of really wonderful works that were in the show and uh, to have a photograph in in this category is definitely appealing to me i uh, have been traveling a great deal with my wife in the last 15 years and the travel aspect uh, turns on my camera switch and i um, am always on the lookout in a wandering around the town mode for something that has a geometric aspect to it. It seems to be a, a theme running through the uh, selectees today, but I love anything that's got a repeated pattern, a leading line, uh, any kind of a graphics content like circles and angles and um, reflections um, added on top of that, uh, just sort of make me stop in my tracks and uh, raise the camera up. Liverpool of all things, um, uh, was a, a huge seaport um, uh, economic dynamo for Great Britain for a couple of centuries, I guess. And it kind of uh, fell out of favor with uh, the shipping industry slowing down. And uh, the waterfront um, apparently had deteriorated, had uh, pretty much uh, gone derelict in some parts of it. And the town and perhaps the country added money to go into a big urban renewal category, re, uh, rethinking the waterfront. 
and it's uh, now got five or six brand new buildings, a couple of art galleries, uh, I think an aquarium, and office buildings as well to try to get businessmen to come back into the downtown area. And you're right that this is an old um, portion of a building that's reflected on a new office building. It grabbed my attention and uh, there it is. That's about it. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Rither, for all your insight on what went into your choices and for the responses from the artists that received the awards. Uh, I think it shed a lot of light into the process, the piece, and just the show as a whole. We love that you were here, but if you have any questions for Mr. Reuther, now would be the time to open it up. The floor is open. Uh, you can just unmute and fire away. Very nice to be here with everyone and to hear how you're all thinking, how we are all thinking about our work and uh, what associations we have. And it's wonderful to look at work with other people, to be uh, hearing what a person is saying about their work or somebody else's work while you're looking at the work. I always see so much more than is being talked about. It's just a wonderful way to open up seeing. I'm so glad to have been with you today. Thanks. I, yeah. I just want to say that I really appreciate Mr. Reuter. Is that how you pronounce the name? That's Ruth Erskine. Um, <laughs> that your, uh, your comments are very well um, thoughtful and very um, direct. And um, they seem very genuine. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. No, thank you. That's a very kind comment. The other thing I would say about this group, which is so uh, heartening to me, is that um, how articulate you all are. And I'm sure if we could get comments from everybody and that the submitted work to the show, I think there would be equal, um, equal, equally a high level of discussion, which is, is uh, you learn more about this work. And to me, the more I learn about the artists and the work, the more interested I get in, in each individual work. And it, it probably would even, you know, um, change one's mind a little bit about the work. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well uh, for me. So I very much appreciate the comments from this group. I have a question, uh, maybe comment. Um, this is Lamore. I know you get a lot, uh, as a juror, you get a lot of uh, work to submit it. I assume that most of it is uh, is 2D, uh, mostly paintings. Um, I'd be, and, and you are a painter, and so you mentioned a lot about what your uh, choices were uh, about paintings and uh, photography. And I'm interested in, I'm, I'm interested in knowing a little bit more about uh, how you as a photographer, jury, 3D. So, so I guess the question is, is how do I evaluate three-dimensional yeah, art? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost like you say uh, that I, my focus is on two-dimensional work, primarily drawings and paintings. And so it's, uh, and I, which is curious because I started out as a uh, sculptor. Uh, when I first began uh, sort of to seriously think about art as a career, uh, I was mostly interested in sculpture and rather traditional sculpture. So in this particular group of, of work, there were fewer sculptures to even choose from, number one. So uh, that narrows down uh, you know, the possibilities of selection, et cetera. One of the things I do as a painter is I'm interested in form, what used to traditionally be called form, which simply means three-dimensionality as an illusionistic approach to uh, drawing and painting. To work that way, you have to uh, conceptually understand how things work in space. So when I paint, objects, I'm thinking not just about the, the planar structure of the two-dimensional canvas I'm working on, but I, I try as much as I can to think about how these things work in space. And so, um, you know, that that would be one way I think about that. And, and really to evaluate sculpture is very tricky in this type of environment because it, it really needs to be seen in the round. And of course, I I mostly have looked at this work 
well, entirely in this case uh, through a, uh, a computer screen, which of course flattens out three dimensional objects. I can't really tell so much what's going around. So in fairness, I probably would have a slightly different response if I was able to actually um, evaluate these works in the round, which I think is probably the best way to look at sculpture. So I haven't answered your question at all, uh, Lamore. No, you about. have, and and I understand because I I paint and do three D also. I mean, and I switch between the two, so I I do understand. Uh, uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you so much, Mr. Ruther, today. Um, for well, not only for today, for the whole process, you've been very lovely to work with. Um, we're very happy that you chose to work with us. Hopefully. We're an organization that you see yourself working with in the future. Um, thank you so much to the artists that came out today. It's always nice to hear you guys talk about your pieces and just reflect on kind of what went what went into making the pieces, um, your thought processes, mental frameworks. It's always lovely to hear. I think that will conclude our virtual award ceremony. Uh, I want to thank you all again. And um, I hope you all have a great, great rest of your evening and uh, take care. Mm -hmm.